Boom. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode. I got Alfie Ref out there on the West Coast at UCLA. Excited to have you and join the conversation. Um, but as always, we kick it off with a wild and fu- wild or funny story. Um, what do you got? Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Ryan. I'm, I'm excited to be on this podcast with you and, and just chat a little bit. But uh, yeah. yeah, funny story. It takes me back to this one always jumps out uh, to childhood. So I, I grew up playing basketball. That was my like primary first sport. And okay. So there was basketball and volleyball early on, but like I was pretty heavy into it. Like, I mean, it was it was the first sport and uh, I think it was it's got to be like fourth grade. And we're playing in like, you know, our, our league, like our elementary, like school league, which was pretty competitive. I mean, it was like, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like serious stuff. So um, I buy these like new shoes. I remember I was stoked. Like I asked my parents to get me new shoes for the season and we go out and we're like, we're playing in the game and, you know, like I'm looking at the floor and like all these scuffs are happening on the ground. And I'm like, oh man, like you know, like, are my shoes scuffing the ground? And so like, I'm, I don't know why I'm aware of this when I'm playing, but I am. And so at like halftime, the referees, I see them like surveying the court and just like <laughs> around. And so they make us all line up on like the center line and they um, make us do like a test and like s- skirt our foot on the ground. Yeah. Right? And so I like do a little one to check and sure enough, it's my shoe. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm, you know, I'm like, oh man, like we're in the middle of this game and like I'm playing well. And so I do mine and they're like, they start blowing the whistle and like pointing <laughs> down at me. I mean, I'm like a 10, you know, what am I, yeah. like 11 years old? So I'm like, oh, like, you know, there's just like all this shame and embarrassment. So <laughs> I'm like, what I do, like we got to play, like I, I'm not not playing this game. So totally time, I think I was like, I don't know what size I was, but the only person that had tennis shoes was like my best friend's mom. And she's sitting in the stands and she has these pink LA gears. And I'm like, I don't care. Give me the shoes. Yeah. I put the pink LA gears on. I think we end up winning the game. I can't remember. But I just, I mean, that's like an, a moment at a young age of one, just like, okay, I'm going to make a choice. I'm either sitting out or like, I'm going to play in these pink LA gears with a bunch of 11 year olds. And I didn't, I didn't, I really didn't give a crap. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. put them on. We, I know team ended up moving, but it was, that was a, I don't know if that's a funny story, but just one that really sticks out to me. And like, no, I'm going to make some choices when I'm 11 years old. Like, here we go. Dude, I love it. I had some LA gears myself. It's like, I feel like you should have had a sponsorship at that point. Like, this is a total TV commercial. <laughs> right. Gosh, where was my NIL deal when I was like 11 years old? I know, right? All right. Uh, so what, Um, that makes me think of, of like, what ended up leading you down more towards like the volleyball route, Um, especially sounds like being pretty heavily into basketball too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... um. I think it's two things. The first one was I stopped growing <laughs> and I was, I was the same size at like, you know, fifth grade that I am now. So I, I actually, at fifth grade, I was like pretty tall. I was like a forward and, yeah, yeah. You know, underneath. And then I got to middle school and everyone kept growing and I was like, oh, this, this is going to pan out well for me. I learned about jeans and looked at my mom's side and I'm like, oh, Filipinos aren't really playing in the NBA. So I don't know. That's probably not a, a route I want to go in. Um, so that was first, but then mostly like I just volleyball was, um, like I said, basketball and volleyball, both were like kind of co- hand in hand, uh, growing up. And it wasn't till like middle school that I think there were more, more opportunities club wise to start playing volleyball, uh, yeah. on a more competitive level. And so it was a little bit of a combination of that. I think there was just more access to it. Um, yeah. and then I really just started to fall in love with the game. I was really fortunate I have an older sister that played and so by the time she was in high school I was well into middle school I think and I used to go to her practices and you know I got the opportunity to play with them and so I was just around the game a lot more and it's an easy game to fall in love with once you start so yeah uh, I would say like middle school is when I started to really veer off and then uh started playing club volleyball when I got to high school and um yeah it was just a it was it was my number one sport at that point yeah where um where you grew up was there's a reason why i asked this i'll say this afterwards um where where you grew up was volleyball like big and the reason i asked that is i'm originally from alabama where like volleyball's not really that big and then i moved to dallas texas and i was like holy hell like yeah like my eyes were just like volleyball and soccer those were the two that like when I got out there I was like it was like a new world um so I'm just curious was like 
where you grew up was it was it as popular as like a Dallas I guess yeah that's a good I mean that's funny my husband's from Alabama and he's always like oh what part yeah he's from Huntsville okay so, yeah, yeah I grew yeah. up in Birmingham so yeah, yeah I love Huntsville okay too. yeah he always yeah. tells me that's like a hop skipping away from uh, totally Huntsville. but um yeah where I grew I was fortunate like it, it was a big thing I mean it I grew up in Oxnard, California, which is a coastal city in Southern California. So um, while it wasn't like Manhattan Beach or like, you know, some of the major like beach towns in Southern California, we still like it still was like we had a men, uh, a boys team in high school that was pretty good when I was yeah. growing up. And, you know, there are a couple club teams like Santa Barbara's close by. So Santa Barbara's 45 minutes from my hometown. And that's obviously like a really historic volleyball and rich like uh, history of volleyball has been there. Okay. So. I think a lot of that, like you have LA, Santa Barbara, and my hometown's in the middle. And so I think the influences of volleyball across the coast just kind of, you know, like it landed in our, our little town of Oxnard as well. So I was fortunate enough to see it uh, in high school. They played. Uh, I also, my in my church community that I grew up in, we, um, yeah, we were like, it was like, sport centric like okay. everyone play. i mean you played everything you play basketball you play volleyball like it was uber competitive so it just it was around from a very young age like i can't remember not seeing volleyball played like yeah uh, after church got out on sundays everyone like laced up and had their shorts and we played on the asphalt you know until the sun went down totally like, so it's it's just it was always around i was i was really i was really fortunate that um, in a lot of parts of the communities I grew up in, like it, it was, um, yeah, it was just there. So, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, my, my eyeballs were like, I mean, it exploded. Like I was yeah. just like, I had no idea that the sport was that popular that and soccer. I mean, I guess I kind of always knew soccer just globally. It's just a popular sport. Mm -hmm. Um, but you don't see it, uh, like especially uh men's volleyball i feel like the only time you see it's the olympics right like that's when it gets like the most like notoriety it's a lot of those sports swimming um i feel like gymnastics sure. is a little bit thrown in that uh, boat too um and so yeah it's just interesting that like with exposure comes popularity it just takes the exposure and i think that's the you you'll know better than me but like that's the hard part which and now like women's volleyball is obviously within the last like six eight months is totally getting more exposure um, for sure yeah i agree with that yeah i mean i think the beach scene like the avp was really big you know uh again like being in southern california you knew about the avp karch karai like randy Soklos, just these like these legendary players and it was it was actually show i mean i remember being a young kid and watching the avp like on primetime like on like cbs on like a saturday or a sunday when it would you right. know so it, it did have that exposure but it wasn't that wasn't indoor men's volleyball by any means you know so right agree, like that exposure you weren't seeing those games anywhere like until it was the olympics um and even if that very very little uh, what drew you to more towards, I guess now, and it could just be opportunity. It doesn't have to be anything like, uh, but towards like the women's game, is there anything specifically? Is it just more opportunity or, um, no, yeah. I mean, I coached, you know, I coached boys volleyball, like club for a long time. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's anything specific because I really love the game, uh, on both. I mean, it's, it's just such a great sport, whether is it's... it different? Like, is it genuinely like different to coach in terms of, of like, let's just take, take hypothetically like a college team. Like, would it be different coaching like a men's team take like personality and like yeah. emotions out of it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I, I get your question. Um, I think the I think the game is mirroring the game on the men's and the women's side is start, is mirroring like uh, one another in terms of like systems and how the game's being played um, pretty closely these days. You know, there's, there's subtle differences. I would say like in the women's game, you know, there's a slide attack where hitters are hitting off of one foot, you know, you don't see that primarily uh, on the men's side so much. Um, so there are small differences, but I would say like, the tenets and the principles of the game are the same and are certainly being taught. I'd see like, especially as of like the last decade, I think things have really started to shift where you see a lot of more, a lot more parallel in how yeah. the game is being taught. Um, so I wouldn't say there's too much difference, honestly. Uh, we're, we're lucky. Like we watch a lot of the men's side and um, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of back and forth from the men's and the women's side and collaboration at least, uh, which is really cool. You know, there's yeah. not too much discrepancy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, to bring up, I know you said uh, you grew up 
uh, well, you mentioned like church and stuff like that, like in just sports and stuff like that. Has that been a part of your life? Is that a part of your life? Um, has that kind of like, I'm just thinking of like the person, right? Like who you are yeah, as like a human yeah. being in terms of like, has it like shaped you and molded you. Is that something that like you still like is a part of your life? Um, yeah, just curious. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it's always a part of me, like the community I grew up in, certainly the morals and, you know, what I learned. Uh, I mean, I was church, like religion and church was a huge, was a huge part of my life. Um, and there are certainly facets of that that still exist in my life from a totally. spiritual level. Um, I don't necessarily subscribe to the religion in the, in the same way that I did when, when I was young, but yeah. Uh, I certainly, I know that that frame and that time frame in my life really did shape a lot of things. And, um, you know, from mostly the community and the people that I was fortunate enough to be with. And so I, I grew up in a very loving and caring community of people that, you know, gave really set, I think, the table for me to dream big and to see yeah. some big things and pushed me to do that. Like, and it wasn't just my parents or my siblings who were phenomenal. Like I, my immediate circle of infrastructure was like incredible, but, or, and on top of that, I also had this like outlying community that was just, you know, like my biggest supporters, my biggest fans and would push me to do the things that, and, you know, like, so I was just, I, I gained a lot, I would say in my formative years, you know, my first 18 years of life, like I was just really, really lucky to have like such a strong community of friends, family and elder, you know, like older people to look up to, um, in so many facets of life, not just sports. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like, I think that's always like fascinating is, um, I just call it like product of your environment. Right. Is, is I think about like, I've got a daughter that's about to turn two and as like, everyone's like, Oh, she's so like mature, like for her age and the way that she talks and everything. And it's like, it really has nothing to do with me per se. It's like she hangs out with four, five, and six year olds, right? She's not even right. two yet. And so it's like, I think just being in that environment has helped mold her and shape her like that. And so it's like, sounds like kind of a similar scenario of just being around people that I assume probably dreamt big, that had a certain high level of like ambition to where it's like, oh, that's really cool. It's like, I'll adopt those things and like make them part of like who I am like as a person. Yeah, I, it's something I often as a coach, I think about a lot. And I think it's, um, you know, I don't know why I was so fortunate to have that yeah. <laughs> environment that really influenced me positively. But certainly, there's an immense gratitude at this age for that, because I understand the effects right. that that has, you know. Um, and so I th it, it's what drives, I think, a lot of my coaching philosophy to hopefully create an environment where we can send ripples and positive positively or just influence, you know, the people in our sphere of influence, um, you know, better. And so, um, you know, I recognize not everyone's given that yeah. um, privilege and, and certainly those opportunities at a young age. And so, um, you know, it's, I think coaching is a little bit of like that little piece in time that maybe we can affect, um, you know, individuals in, you know, much later in their life, but still nonetheless, hopefully have a, a positive affect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think about too, it's helping, especially as you get to um, where you're making an impact in terms of like the college age. So like 18 to 22, 23 or 17 to 22, 23 um, of, you may not have had that um, luck, we'll call it in terms of, of like being in that environment. But now as you become a young adult, it's understanding like the power of choice too, and that you can choose right. those circles and you can choose those people and you don't have to succumb so much to like circumstance, right? It's like, if, if this group is not serving you well, it's like, well, you do have a choice, right? And it's like, it may be difficult right. and it might be the hardest thing you've done in 18 years yet at this point in your life, but you do have that opportunity to make a decision for yourself. And I'm sure that's probably a, a daily message. <laughs> um, it, it, I mean, it really is. It's at the, uh, you hit it on the head, right? It's really at the crux, I think, of what we do. And um, at least at this collegiate level, obviously, there's a performance component. We're all trying to totally. win. But like we here at UCLA, like I'll speak, obviously, just from my program. Uh, it is a big part of not necessarily, I think, just giving individuals tools to yeah. recognize that they have choices and hopefully make choices that uh, align with whatever it is, you know, 
their goals, uh, align with their individual purpose and meaning for why they, you know, exist. And uh, so it's, it, it is, it is a, it's a fun, it's a really fun and full process. Uh, it certainly is challenging because 18 to 23 year olds, it's, you know, like it's a very formative time. Like they're becoming young adults and learning how to make choices for themselves for the first time. And, um, and so I, I, I do, we do take that responsibility very seriously in terms of our ability to, or I should say our impact to, and the potential of our impact to give them tools to understand what's happening in life and then hopefully make choices, as you said, you know? Yeah. And I think too, is I'd be curious on your, uh, your thought on this. Um, so a large majority of the teams that I work with are female college teams too. And so I think how, when I think of like power of choice in with, within like female athletics is the big hurdle for them is, is like a feeling of unworthiness, not knowing their value, determining like who they are, like as a person at a deeply rooted level. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's like giving them that power. It's like, Hey, just because somebody told you, like you weren't good enough, like 10 years ago, that's still eating your soul alive. Now it's like, you don't have to, to believe that for the rest of your life, right? You, you do have the ability to look in the mirror and like, I'm beautiful. I'm powerful. I'm inspirational. I make a difference, like whatever those things are. And so that's kind of what right. I think about of, of like, especially like with what you're doing just in female athletics is like, I feel like it's a little more like as men sometimes is even like, uh, wrestling coaches, college wrestling coaches and other that coach on like the male side. It's like, he's just like, sometimes it takes me two years to get it out of it because these guys don't want to talk about it. It's weakness, sure. right. You know? Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, is like, is that kind of a a puzzle piece as well, I guess, to so to speak? It's a huge one. Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's a really vulnerable place to come from where we're trying to separate and and not just separate, but well, let me, let me backtrack. I mean, we are always trying to separate, you know, performance of the athlete and and the individual. Those two things at times like intersect and we have to understand that. But also like when we're talking about value uh, you know, worth is not derived from like our performance in, in any kind of arena, whether it's athletics or music or academics, even like that's being, being able to separate those two is a heart is something we, um, we really try to do. And I don't know that we state that explicitly, but also we do a lot of work on just the individual and understanding, yeah. working on ourselves, uh, developing purpose and meaning and what we're about, you know, so that, um, we can hopefully withstand some of the external pressures and certainly the external narratives of like, it's, I think it's natural that sports sometimes suggests that our worth is winning and losing when you're investing so much of yourself into it. But uh, we do front load and try to set the foundation for the fact that we are more than just the performers on the court, you know? Uh, and so, yeah, we, I, I think that's a real challenge when you're 18 years old and you're like, I you know, I, I don't know, like my mom and dad have done everything for me up until this point. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it is, we like to use the word exploration a lot. There's a lot of exploration for, yeah. um, you know, discovering what that is and playing around with what that might be in this time and, um, and then constantly circling back. So there's refinement in terms of like our athletes, hopefully understanding by the time they leave at 22, they're a much more, um, a better versed, you know, on who yeah. they at least want to be. Um, and so I, I, we, like I said, we, we enjoy, uh, I think that process because at the end of the day, that's to me what it's about. You know, yeah. Gonna, yeah. 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 I totally so. agree is I think the analogy I try to like tell them is, you know, initially, you know, the, the infamous question, like, who are you? And they're like, what do you want to know? And I'm like, everything. And they're like, where do you want me to start? I'm like, anywhere, right? Just yeah. go. And so it's yeah. like this, this, this struggle, because it's like, it's like the most stressful question when it really should be probably the easiest question. And so the analogy is, is like, as I, as I watch kind of like their frustration, I'm just like, well, let me ask you this. Do people write books on themselves? And they're like, well, mm -hmm. well yeah. And I'm like, that's what I want to be able to do. I want you to be able to do for yourself. So when somebody yeah. says, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job interview, like whatever the thing is, is like when somebody's like, tell me about you. It's like, grab a bottle of wine and half your day. Cause here we go, baby. Right. Like yeah. you have that, that aura about it versus like, 
well, what do you want to know? It's like, I don't know you. Like, tell me everything. And I think that that's a big challenge and hurdle. I think just people in general. I mean, I think that's I that's the ultimate, like, is I think kind of the buzz term right now is like identity crisis, right? Mm, and so it's like yeah. it's knocking that domino down. Um, so Yeah, I, I love that. I agree with that, Ron. I think what when I hear you talk about that, I think there's, you know, even when people ask me, like it can be a, a, a daunting question, you know, right. but with work done and like constant attention and care to like truly like wanting to be the things you say you are, I think it's, there's an ownership that comes when, you know, I see it with our athletes and we do it in recruiting. Like, you know, like what are, what are you about as an, as a player? And then what are you about as a person? And it's fun to watch. And there's, I don't know that there's, you know, ever a right or a wrong, of course, to that, but it's fun to watch athletes and people work through that question. Um, you know, really like think, like maybe sometimes for the first time, maybe some of them are like, I've never been asked this, you know, and then some be able to like reel it off pretty quick. Like, okay, that they've clearly done some work on themselves and, um, you know, thought about this. And, you know, we try to have like a, um, <clears throat> a personal philosophy. We worked on that. And actually this reminds me, I need to get back to that with my team, but <laughs> speaking you, of, I gotta yeah, go. Speaking of, hold on, let me write that note really fast on my, <laughs> no, but I, I think that's a big thing is like, can you summarize like what you're about in literally 25 words or less? I mean, yeah. how, what are those, what are those like real keywords in that? And it's, it's a fun uh, experiment. You know, it's not certainly not something I've developed. I've listened to a lot of, you know, Dr. Mike Gervais and he does a lot of stuff like that. And um, and so anyhow, just another piece of like developing the, the whole person, not necessarily just the athlete here. Yeah. And I think too, is I think a lot of, for me, when I think of like how to start helping people like through that process is I think to me, step one is, is like, you have to get really curious. Right. And I think curiosity yeah. drives so much and it's like, you know, it's, I always say too, um, because much of, of how you describe yourself are your beliefs. And at one time, those were never your beliefs, right? It was your teachers. It was your coaches. It was the church. It was your community. And so for me, it's like challenging it in a way of, of not saying what you believe is wrong, but do you know why you believe what you believe? Or was it just some like hardwired belief? And so, you know, I, the example I always give is, you know, if somebody says like, you know, I believe in God. And I'm like, well, like, why is it that you believe in God? And you just go, because my parents took me to church on Sunday. It's like, that's a really bad answer, right? Like, right, right. <laughs> no, right. I agree with that. I mean, I I think of like how important, and this is, again, always, I always go back to sport, but what's so beautiful about it is like, we are, we're given so many repetitions at challenge and like adversity, because that's just the nature of what we do. And it, as I think to your point, um, you know, it really is like through challenge and adversity and all that, that we, we get to refine a lot of those, you know, ideals or thoughts about who we want to be and, and put it to the test and a lot of times fail at it. But yeah, in that, you know, obviously there's more depth and understanding of, okay. Uh, I mean, I will say this, like I've written out personal philosophies for myself in the last, I know, eight years, I'd say I've been really diligent with it. And every year I kind of revisit it and I mm -hmm. as a practice with my team and for myself and it's probably not till really this year that um like the words you know some of the buzzwords are in love and curiosity those are things that I like to like really align with um make truly have sense you know and make sense yeah. and have depth and nuance and uh and I would say like not that they didn't before but there's just you know this last year for myself has been uh by design i knew taking this job and you know I, I work with the usa team and they're phenomenal opportunities but it's challenged me in different ways that i just haven't had the opportunity to be challenged at in my career or in my life and so um given the the proper framework i think and i'm fortunate i've had a lot of people guide me through sport to set that framework up uh it's given me a lot of repetitions and a lot of things to like <laughs> like examine against and like okay like yeah. this is why you know I, i'm either this or i'm not 
Uh, and by all means, I've failed a lot at it, you know, in the last year and, totally. and I'm still finding my way. And, and I don't know, like, I think you said, staying curious and like constantly evolving with that is, is the fun part. Um, and I'm just on a total tangent right now, Ryan. No, but, I love uh, it. I love I, it. I, I, think, I, got... I think that's where sport is just great. It gives us this platform to, uh, with the proper framework to really, you know, test some things out and, and learn quickly. And, and then you get another rep, you know, an hour later in some other part of something. So. Yeah. And I love, it makes me think of too, especially when you talk about like challenges or shortcomings, or we can call them pains or we can call them failures. We can call them whatever we want is, is I had a mentor uh, tell me, and she was just like, Ryan, the beauty about experiencing what you don't want is it gives you the light of, of knowing exactly what you do want. Right. For and sure. so it's like, it's just like this, the smallest of tweaks. Right. So I'm like, man, I really don't want that. But like that really does help me answer the question of like what I do want. Right. right. And so it's like, I think it's like, it's the, it's those little quirks that at least for me, or it's like, you know, I think too many, especially young kids, it's like, and God bless our, our, our youth league coaches, but like, it's the, of like, well, just think positive, just think positive, just, just be positive where it's like, right. I get what, what you're trying to say, but like, if I just experience like the most challenging thing yet in my life, it's like, I'm not just going to be able to be like, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Right. right. And right. so it's like yeah. having something to help me shift to your point of having the framework to be able to make me tr those transitions. Yeah. I think, I think that happens a lot and we want to deflect and like, we want to put this, you know, we being coaches, I just understand that, or I don't know anyone that's mentoring, like, it's easy to want to put things in a box and have a clear equation for like, this is the clear line to getting yeah. good. And like yeah. the reality is like in sport and in life, that's just not the case. Right. So can we, I just love your word of curiosity. Cause it's something I think like, can we, and it, there's a playfulness that comes with that. Yeah. word. I think taking the judgment out of this is good or bad. And it's just, this is what it is. And I can recognize that this is what's occurring and then make choices, you know, learn from it and make choices to either improve or, you know, um, stay the course or whatever it is. But I do think that framework is essential and and it's very easy often, you know, in any part of our lives, of course, I'm not saying by any means I have this right or teach it right, but right. to to stay, I think, yeah, just to stay in that headspace or have, have an awareness around the fact that uh, everything is really just an opportunity for us to examine and learn and hopefully, you know, keep moving the needle to wherever we need to get to. Yeah. And I, one of the uh, other things I want to touch on, cause you started to talk about it is, um, I think a big hurdle and it sounds like you are doing potentially a good job of it is I think a big hurdle with coaches in general is, is, um, the buzzwords are just thrown around like too much. Like we need better leadership. It's like, I don't like, I don't know what that actually means. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. and you know, it's culture is another one. Confidence is another one. Right. There's all these different words of, of like, I think oftentimes we're just thrown out is again, one of the sports that I work a lot with is I, it never fails. I'm like, if you could have one thing non-physical, what would it be? And like, hands down it's confidence. Right. It's like, it's like, that's, I'm like, okay, but what's your definition of confidence? And then everyone just looks at me. Right. <laughs> and so I was like, again, the analogy, I'm like, that's like literally getting a grocery list and somebody telling you to go buy apples and you don't know what apples are. So like you wake right. up every day in search of this thing called confidence, but there is no magic fairy dust. Right. right. Like, yeah. so we have to put meaning behind those things. And so to your point is, is like, you were kind of touching on it is, you know, it's, I think you use some of the words of like trust and love and, you know, some of those is when we have these values, do we actually know what they mean, at least to us? Or if you're a team, right. like what do they mean for our team? Because um, sure. that's the only way to move the needle, in my opinion. <laughs> it's it's great. Yeah, I just I mean, you're hitting so many things, meaning, you know, meaning giving meaning to things and um you know, in the context of our team, like we do a lot of, uh, you know, we build our own standards out. They, they, I should say, build their standards out for how they want to exist and experience the space competitively as a team and, and giving def defining words that and giving them meaning to what that looks like, you know, yeah. not just like, this is what it means, but this is also how it lives, how it breathes, what it looks like in our gym when we're outside of the gym. I mean, uh, I think that's when 
culture as you it's such a but i put it in quotes because it's such a yeah, buzz totally. but like truly is like rich and like <clears throat> has color to it when as you said there's meaning um without that it's yeah we hear those things a lot like have confidence like well okay what does that mean uh truly <laughs> let's let's like really break this down and how does that show up and you know like what are the battles with that you know and how do we work through like those moments where we don't feel so confident right you know, it's just yeah. like uh ethereal like thing we can pull out of the air like you know and so we really really do try to not just share the what because i think the what everybody knows for the most part what what they want but it's mm -hmm. like how do we create that and how do we how do we you know how do we identify when it's not there the how part is the fun part to us well, that was, I was going to, there has to be some way to measure it, right? Like if it's not right. measurable, then like, there's really no way of ever, it just sounds great. Right. It's like, um, you know, it, again, in, in a specific sport and maybe you, maybe this is an analogy, I don't know for like volleyball, but it's like when they win, they're like, dude, our team energy was great. And then when they lose, they're like, man, our energy was so down. I'm like, I don't know that like the wins and losses, like, I just don't like, how are you actually measuring this? <laughs> yes. Yes. You're, you're hitting it, man. It's uh, it's like, we were so engaged when we won. I'm like, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> like the vibe is so good. Like what? No, we're not, we're not throwing that out there. Like that's not it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and in all seriousness, it's like, well, how do we be good when the vibe is not good? Cause a lot of times when you're playing, the vibe is not good. The energy right. like, something. So like, let's just, again, let's take the judgment out. It's not, good or bad like this is just what it is what are the solutions how do we fix this you know so i love the good and bad thing i heard that from like tony robbins way back in the day of, of like you know he said that i think he said nothing i always just kind of requote it in terms of, of like very few very few things in life are inherently good or bad it's just based off of the meaning that we give it and sure. so it's like you know i'm from alabama i went to school at west virginia when i got there and it snowed ever it was a party and i was like this is the most miserable day of my life. Right. <laughs> like, and so it's like same, same environment, same experience, but to them, it was the best day ever. Cause they're getting out snowboards and they're, you know, getting yeah. ready to go to the slopes and I'm like, bro, I'm not going outside. Right. Like, right. Um, so I love that of like, just things aren't good or bad. Like how, what's your, what's your perspective of it? Right. I think it's, we're, we're conditioned to like put things in these boxes. Right. And for the sake of it, sometimes it makes me feel good or, you know, it yeah. helped. and of course there, are, you know, I think there's nuance in that. I'm not saying everything is just, there's gray and there's, you know, things, Hey, we got to show up on time. Like that's just what that is. And, you know, but even in that, like, I, I wouldn't say, Hey, it's bad. If somebody doesn't show up on time, like what happened? How do we, how do we figure this out? Like, why are we late? Okay. And it can't happen again. You know? So I, I, it doesn't, I know that sounds simplistic and like, there's no good or bad because there are certainly standards and values we keep, but I think the point of that is like, can we just keep a framework where, um, and man, when you sit in the good and bad, that takes so much time to process through. And, you know, like, especially when you're labeling something as, oh, this is not good. Like yeah. how much like mental space and just the energy that it extracts from actually like, I don't know, this is what it is and this is what I did. And you know, I'm just going to move through this, you know, a little quicker. So yeah. Yeah. Did you always want to stay in California or did you want to like, what was the, I guess, let me back up. Did you always know you wanted to coach? Was that always? Yeah. Uh, good question. You know what? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I always knew coaching was like, um, I mean, from when I was in high school, I think, okay. I think, uh, as I said, curiosity is something that's always struck with me. Like, so process of how things are done, whether it was on the court, you know, uh, are you I, very analytical, like very logical thing? Um, I analytical. Yes. I think I just, I have like, um, I have like obsession with processes. Like, yeah. I don't know. I like to figure things out uh, like, and certainly there's a component of being challenged. So like an example outside of volleyball was like, you know, when I was a kid at, in the church, I keep going back to the church I was in, um, uh, we needed an organist. Like they were like, Hey, our organist is like, we don't have somebody like I was in choir. So I understood music. I was like, yeah, I can, I can figure this out. Like I had someone teach me like, <laughs> and I know how to read music and somebody taught me like fingering and how to move, you know, whatever, like the basics. Yeah. And it was just this an obsession of like, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And I practiced and, you know, kept taking small lessons here and there. And, uh, I just remember the feeling of that, like the exhilaration of like learning 
something and and working towards mastering that, you know, yeah. and by no means did was I a master of the organ, but I was on that journey at a young age. So I say that because I really did. I, that's something I know is in me. Um, and I was coaching volleyball specifically from like when I was in high school playing, I would coach like the freshman girls team, you know, and yeah. like help out. And I just really enjoyed like building things out. So I did always know that coaching was certainly like a strong avenue I was going to go down. Um, yeah. 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 Did you always want to stay in California? Um, Was that the dream? The dream? No. You know, I don't know that my brain works that way. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I wish it's really weird. I wish I could say, I mean, it's nice to be home, you know, and I think as I got older, like I coached in lots of different parts of the country, you know, I've played in all parts of the world. Like, um, and so I think through like my twenties when I was playing and just traveling the world, like my world opened up, you know, and yeah. like I realized there's just so much more out there than living in California, <laughs> which it's great. Like, I mean, I love home. I love LA, but um, I, I don't think as I started to become an, an adult, I wasn't really closed off to anything. I was like, well, I think the world yeah. is has a million opportunities and I was fortunate enough to, and I've been fortunate enough to like really explore those opportunities in the sport. Um, but I would say now at like 41, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. That feels a lot older than when I say that, but at 41, it sure is nice to be back in LA and yeah. it, it feels pretty full circle. And uh, you know, with my family and my husband and just, yeah. So I, I can't say that I've always wanted to be in LA, yeah. but it sure is a nice place to land and it feels good to be back for sure. So that was my next question. How do you meet somebody from Huntsville, Alabama, being <laughs> from California? <laughs> and that then did great... you did you have to lure out to to LA? Or I, I guess if you guys met out there, then that would make sense. Yeah, no, no, that's a good question. Um, he can't. He so he's a music guy. He okay. He's, you know, he's an actor. Uh, he was a stage actor, singer, um, and so he came out to LA to do his grad work. Um, gotcha. To do his MFA in. Is it music, film, and acting? And so he was at Cal State LA, and uh, we met. Just we met online, and I was like, you know, I had no, I had no idea where Huntsville, Alabama was. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so he's he's been out in LA for a while, and um, you know, he, Did he ever go back family, or is it, once he moved. Yeah, he yeah. There? yeah. No, all of his. I mean, his immediate family is no longer there, but his, you know, grandmother, extended family, they're all in Alabama still. Um, and so he goes back. I haven't been yet, which I, I'm Huntsville's kind say. of like of a booming little. Uh, I say little. It's not that little. Um, but Huntsville's yeah. kind of booming. Um, it's cool. Like I mean, his dad worked for NASA, you know, and so like yeah. that's there obviously. And um, I mean, I just hear it's great, you know. So and I haven't got it. It's not because I don't like. I really do want to go back. I just got to find time to get back there. And <laughs> I, I genuinely like. I mean, I, there's nothing. I would want more than anything to see like hey where did you grow up oh, yeah so. anyways another thing i'm just gonna write down on my to-do list but <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go buy a plane ticket now <laughs> yeah 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 sorry team i'm uh i'm gonna miss practice the next few days i'm going to huntsville i gotta get this done <laughs> um what about that is i'm always curious um for a short stint um my wife coached in college athletics so it's like i'm curious especially from like a relationship side of things um Cause you're always on the go, right? Like it's, if it's not yeah. season, it's recruiting. It's like, and so I, I don't like to say, or I just don't believe that. I think a lot of times when we talk about balance, we think of like 50, 50 and there's just yeah. moments in time where life is just unbalanced, right? Like it just is right. I would, the example I give the athletes, cause they're like, we need balance. I'm like, but like during like finals week, isn't your life unbalanced towards school? And they're like, okay, that actually makes sense. I'm like, yeah, like there's just moments in time. And so like, how do you guys kind of like manage that? Um, is he still doing the, like the music and acting stuff? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious, like how to, how to navigate those question. waters. I feel like you're like taking an etch or look into my like daily, like <laughs> journal where I'm like, you know, writing things down and goals and no, it's, it's, it's a really big thing. I I, I appreciate you asking that and touching on that. We, um, yeah, I, I don't necessarily believe that balance is what I seek or me and Ryan seek because it's just not realistic um, yeah. with the aspirations and the goals we have in place. Um, but we do talk about harmony, you know, and like having harmony with the seasons of life. And, 
you know, every season's a little different and, um, and seasons being like, you know, literally when I'm in season or yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. like, uh, or we're at in, where he's at in his journey professionally. And so I think for us, it's getting really clear on, um, and communicating through like, Hey, this is what I have going on. Yeah. Um, and making sure that I'm really upfront with like where, you know, I want to be good for us and because I want to compete in our relationship too. And I want to continue to move that along and learn about him and be a great husband, just like I'm trying to be a great coach and a great friend and all these things. And so just as in anything, like I do with my staff and our team, we organize, you know, we communicate, like we front load things. I try to do that the same way I do in that, in my relationship and some, some months and days and weeks, it's a lot easier and sometimes it's tougher, but yeah. again, neither good or bad. It's just like, Hey, this is what's, what is, and we have to, you know, keep planning and finding ways. So I, again, to answer your question, I think it's finding harmony in that time, being realistic with this is where I really can give, but I will prioritize if it's an hour a week, you know, and that's, yeah. if it's a really rough week, like, or just finding pockets of time to make sure that I'm still um, being there and being a great teammate for him, uh, the way I would be for anyone I'm working with or any other part of my life. So, yeah. Cause yeah. I always like, it makes me think of too. It's, um, even especially again, when I think of like talking with like the, when I say athletes, cause most of them are like 18, 19, 20 or 21 and 22. Um, as a lot of times, many of them are experiencing like their first relate, like real relationship, what I would call like intimate relationship, um, and so I always, the, the challenging question, right. I'm like, okay, what's the prime, I believe what's the primary reason you get in a relationship. And they're like, how'd you like them? I'm like, well, that's probably a piece of the puzzle. I don't know that that's like, the, I hope that's <laughs> this is the driving, right? Like, and so right. it's like, what, like when we get to the root of it is just like, I was like, because you want to be around someone that helps you grow. Right. Is, yes. And and yes. so I think that that ultimately that becomes the driving factor, because I heard um, a speaker, whatever we want to call it, say this is like there's things in life, too, that's like it's an inf like marriage, relationships, health, like all those things are they're not it's an infinite game. Right. Like you don't win in a relationship. Right. It's like you continue to grow. You don't win at health. Right. Like you continue to sure. like you don't work out two years and be like I made it. Right. Like yeah, <laughs> it, doesn't, yeah, yeah. it doesn't work out that way. And it's the same thing. Relationships, marriages. And so it's like getting them to understand. It's like finding again, going back to like environment, finding those people because in an intimate relationship, it's probably going to be slightly more than who you hang out with, like your friends, right? Because then if you're married, then you're like in the same house together, right? Like it's like you're spending more right. and more time. And so it's like you want to create that environment to where it is open communication. Like this is where I'm trying to get to, right? Like I need you to help me. I need you to keep me on track, right? Like for sure. For kind sure. of an, an yeah. accountability partner, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's such a when... I think how can I, it requires, and I'm not an expert by any means, a relationship expert, but also I just, we're, expert, I know, we're experts for the hour, right? Like, you, okay. You're right. You're right. Okay. But I think the richness around like doing work on yourself and knowing what it is you need and what you bring to the table and being open about that and it, having that like North star of like, yeah. this is what I I'm about and being able to articulate that with, you know, whoever you're, intimate with and even people you work with, you know, like I would yeah. say, let's just any relationship we're in is, is a really nice jumping off point to allow for growth together. Um, and as you said, like, yeah, we are never done products, you know, so yeah. that's the fun thing though. And I think um, if we can perspective, have perspective on that of like, this is, this can be playful, you know, like we're, I'm an adult, but I still play around with like, you know, and I use play in a, in a, not a literal sense, but like there is a playfulness to like, this is all, these are all just reps at being better, you know? And so it feels a lot less daunting and, and binding. Um, and there's a lot less pressure, I think <laughs> that comes with the relationship to uh, always have to get it right, you know? But I do thread the needle in my relationship. Like I'm learning, but also I want to show up and, at a certain level for this person and make sure that I'm, I don't know, it's not reckless play, I guess, but more, uh, I'm, continuing to learn and grow together and move and have fun in the process of that, you know? Yeah. It, that really, that word playful reminds me of, um, again, same mentor of 
early on when she was coaching me, whatever you want to call it, uh, she was like, Ryan, like you have to like, like you have to go back and learn to be more childlike because when you were childlike, you're, you just had such an expansive imagination, right? Like there was nothing yeah. that was off limits. Like you put, a you put a blanket around your back and thought you had a cape on and then you could fly, right? Like it, there was right. nothing that was right. off limits. And so she was like, you have to get back to, it doesn't matter how old you are, 26, 30, 35. It's like, you have to be more childlike and have <laughs> that like just imagination of, of like, anything is possible kind of this is that what reminds me when you're like we have to be more playful it's like oh, i can hear deborah in my ear yeah like, you gotta be childlike <laughs> no it's true and i think the longer like the further down a road we get of any kind of you know mastery or let's say if it's you know whatever our our craft is or when we're in relationships like the repetition and of doing things like day to day like can feel mundane right and then it goes back to like can i stay curious like can yeah. i treat each i mean when you're doing something for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, like it's easy to just be like slip into auto, auto mode. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, how do we actually stay aware and curious for the experiences? Cause the reality is like in relationships or even in sports with players, like we are constantly moving and evolving. Like no one stays the same, you know? So how do I, even if I'm doing the same thing, like how do I really dive into the experience of today and stay open to that as opposed to just, I don't know, I'm expecting this. Like, yeah. Well, that, I think that really shuts off then like the potential for like really great things to be experienced, you know, new things to be experienced, even in, in similar themes of what we do. Yeah. It makes me like, again, I can like hear all the, all the mentors and coaches that I had of like, it's the, it's the blessing and the curse of like routines, right. At, at, yeah. at some level they serve us very well, but like if your whole day is just a routine for like five years in a row, it's like, then you're probably not moving the needle all that far yeah. forward you know what i'm saying and so it's like sometimes like a, a different coach that i've had he's like dude like sometimes like you just gotta like just totally mix your day up like go work yeah. somewhere dude drive different on a different way like really like make your brain start to think or like adopt something new it's like if you worked out at 5 a.m he's like start working out at 5 p.m like just throw these loops in your For day sure. to like really kind of like get the brain moving again i yeah Again, you're like, you're taking pages out of my book. <laughs> I certainly like, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think to keep ourselves, yeah, keep things fresh. We mix. I mean, when you said that, I'm thinking my husband, he teaches voice in lessons and he's a pretty like a type personality. So he likes structure. Everything's like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and like, <laughs> and so he would, you know, he writes his lesson plans out. And a couple of weeks ago, he was like, I think, you know, he was staying curious for like how he could get better at his job. And he's like, you know, asking me, do you ever just go off the cusp with practice? I said, no, we certainly make adjustments. I said, I have a plan, but like, you know, sometimes like, Hey, we, we pivot here and like go on the fly here. Cause I'm reading the environment and like, mm -hmm. how do we, what does the team need or what can we, how can we challenge him more here? So oh, and point of the story is like, he start, I mean, he started, going a little more like organic with the lessons and well, freestyle so, like, action. We, yeah. Like, just like, Hey, I'm going to adjust and like read, read the room with, with the singer. And, and like three weeks in, he's like, this has been awesome. He's like, I feel like we are having so much more of like, um, um, like effective, like, I don't know, just back and forth and we're really covering ground. And I just thought it was a neat, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, like for a person who <laughs> literally is like from seven o'clock to nine, there's, there's an order to everything. Like I thought it was a great display of vulnerability to like go outside his comfort zone. Um, and then just a neat lesson on like, you know, staying, staying present and like certainly like open to the experience of what it brings as opposed to like trying to always structure and control yeah. things. There's some value in that freedom, I think um, within reason, of course, but. Yeah. And I think it's being mindful of, like labels we give ourselves, like right. I am type A, right? So it's like now my whole life has sure. to be type A, right? Like, or like yeah. I'm an introvert, right? Or I'm an extrovert. And yes. so it's like, I always think of it as a spectrum, right? And like, you may sit more towards the type A or introvert, extrovert, like that side of the spectrum. But mm. at the same time, it's like, you you need like, it's uh as outgoing as I am. I tell people all the time, I'm like, I'm really introverted. And they're like, everyone's like, mind one. I'm like, like my wife will come and say, she's like, are you in your introverted state? Cause like, she can just tell, like, I just need to be by myself. Right. Like, yeah. I just, like, I just 
don't need to talk right now. It's not that I'm mad or anything. I just like, I need to turn everything off, right? I just need to like be alone kind of type thing. Um, or, you know, another one on like my side is, is like small talk is like very difficult, like for me, that's like stressful for me. It's like, I'd rather have like a more of like deep, intimate conversation. Like, tell me about you, like as a person, right? Like that drives me. It makes me way more happier than like, what's your favorite food and what's the best food in LA, right? Like it doesn't like, <laughs> it's so awkward. To what's, me. Your, what's your sign, Ryan? Not that I'm like an astrology guy, but what's your sign? Believe it or not, I don't know. I'm May 1st. You tell me. Okay. I don't even know what that is. That's how, yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah. Is, okay. You're, I, yeah, that's, that's, I, I identify with that a lot. I think like I could do this for hours. I, it's hard for me to sit in a room and, I don't know, like, oh, which, how's the weather? Like that just, it drains me. It actually really makes me tired. Like yeah. I'm not, it takes, it takes from my cup for sure. So yeah, that's yeah. been a part of like the job that I've had to learn how to be better with. Cause obviously you can't just go to like I'm some right foundation in. meeting and like, like, Hey, what's your personal philosophy? You know, like, but that's the stuff I want to talk about. But like, I have, you know, I have to learn how to So I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you get it, but yeah, yeah. I, I identify, I certainly get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I know even um, so uh, my wife coaches gymnastics. And mm -hmm. so like even when I'm around, she coaches at the club level now. And so it's like high school kids predominantly, right? And so it's like even like when I'm around some of them, it's like they ask me a question. And I'm like, do you really want me to answer this? Because we're about to go deep, right? Like <laughs> there's, there's How no much time you got. <laughs> there's no surface level here. <laughs> or I, I, I get it, man. I appreciate it. And I totally get it. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love it. All right. Last question. So I did yeah. a pre-frame review for this one. Like the first question. Um, if you were in a stadium with a hundred thousand people and you could only leave them with one message, what would that message be? Mm. That's a great question. Gosh, I'm trying to curate this, but probably something around just, you know, the openness to what life brings on the daily, keeping our eyes open, keeping our hearts open, keeping our, you know, our ears open and, and searching for just the opportunity of the moments of every day. You know, I think it's a really rich life. Should we uh, have the opportunity or have the ability to just see it, you know, yeah. um, that sounds so like uh hippy dippy of me, but I, I truly believe in, you know, just that, uh, sorry, that was me judging that, but I just, you know, <laughs> no, truly, I'm but... laughing because like literally, so my, what I talked to earlier this morning, he goes, I got a hippie answer for you. <laughs> yeah, I would just say the the newness of every day and certainly like, you know, there's, there's a lot of beauty and richness to life should we keep ourselves available to it. So, yeah, it makes me think of like, as you say, that is, is like, we have to be like we have to be open to allow things into our life, right? Like when we right. when we walk around stressed and anxious and worried twenty four seven, it's very difficult to allow, even if it's just a network of a of, of a person we don't know, right? Like we could be right. sitting somewhere and there could be a person that's anxious to come speak to us, right? Because they they recognize us or for whatever it is. But if we're if we're so shut off, it's like we don't know what relationships we're losing and we don't know what opportunities we've missed out on because again, we just label things or we just, I always say it's like the worst thing we can say. It's like, this is just the way the life is, right? Like it goes back to like choice and everything else. That's what makes me think of as you talk about that. That's a great reminder. I appreciate that. Honestly, like I'm sad or I'm not that we have to cut it, but like, I'm going to probably end up talking to you at some point outside of this, just because I enjoy totally, your totally. philosophy and things. So yeah, I've enjoyed it, man. Um, Maybe we'll just do round two. Who knows? Maybe I would we'll love just to do round two. Yeah. Run run it back. Um yeah. yeah. Until next time, everybody. Peace.